Contenders in the GOP presidential sweepstakes are taking the weekend to recharge their campaign batteries and sharpen their political knives. Donald Trump and Texas Senator Ted Cruz mostly staying out of the spotlight for now after an intense week that sparked a debate over the propriety of an old Yiddish phrase and whether kids should be fodder for political mm -hmm. cartoonists. For our fair and balanced debate, we have Emily Joshinsky of the Young America's Foundation and radio talk show host Mark Levine. Thank you guys for joining us. We very much appreciate it. Thanks for having us. So I yeah. want to start with you, Mark, because I want to put up a poll here. And it, uh, we see in these numbers, Ted Cruz, uh, from now we have a, a GOP nominee preference, now November 16th, and the change has been uh, about four percentage points. So we've seen a slow but steady rise in the polls from this, uh, for people supporting the senator. I want to gauge, um, you know, he, he really has stump speeches that sound anti-establishment, but he is a senator. So tell me how he walks this fine line. I don't think Ted Cruz is the establishment. I mean, he's uh, kind of the most hated man in the United States Senate. Donald Trump isn't establishment either. Neither yeah. of them are. Uh, I think the establishment would like to see a Marco Rubio or a Jeb Bush, maybe a Chris Christie, something like that. I don't think he's establishment, even though he's in the United States Senate. All right, Emily, what's your reaction? Do you think that uh, Mark has a point the establishment does not want to see him as a candidate? I mean, I think Senator Cruz has this incredible record of principled conservative um, beliefs and actions on those beliefs. So I think any conservative in this country would be more than happy to have Senator Cruz, especially when you think about what the alternative is on the left. I mean, any of these candidates on the right right now are far better than anything on the left. So I do think, actually, that conservatives around the country, myself included, would really, you know, be perfectly happy to have Senator Cruz get this nomination. I, okay. I don't know about principle, though. I think the conservatives, even the establishment, sees him as kind of a used car salesman, kind of slick oily, can't really be trusted. I think that is definitely how he's seen there. Okay, slick oily, think, but he is seeing a lot of support in Iowa, and, and, right. and we could see him come out the winner. So so what does that say? Well, Iowa, right. you got to remember, voted for Michelle Bachman. They voted for um, Mike Huckabee. Iowa does not presidents make, usually. Emily? <laughs> So I think that Senator Cruz is tactically being really smart here. I mean, the Republican bench is so deep. I think any conservative would be happy to support most of them. But Senator Cruz is tactically, he has the foresight to sort of say right now when, you know, Donald Trump likely will drop out at some point, um, what do we do with these voters? Some of them are disenfranchised. They feel very disenfranchised. They're new to the political process. How do we fold them in as Republicans going towards the general election in 2016? So I think what Senator Cruz is doing is actually tactically, politically very smart and it will probably pay off. Okay, so in your theory, and to expand on that, Emily, so how does he stay sort of um, getting those anti-establishment voters? But at the same time, um, he does need to gain mainstream donors, and he's been doing that in the past. How does he continue to do that? Yeah, that's a good question. I think Senator Cruz is politically adept. I think we've covered that right now. Um, it's, it's clear. And so I think what we'll have to see him doing is clarifying his positions. And that's just sort of part of the primary process. And I think sometimes we get so caught up in the day-to-day -day of the primary, we don't see, you know, totally what's coming ahead in the general election. I think that will all be ironed out as he's able to sort of clarify what his positions are on certain issues. Because, like I said, this man is in the United States Senate. I mean, he has a pretty strong record. So he'll be able to appeal um, and as he has time he to has explain. And as the other candidates have the chance to explain, you know, when we start seeing the others drop out. Right? He, has, he has as many years in the Senate as Barack Obama, so they have the same. <laughs> if, if, if Republicans think Barack Obama was ready to be president, then I'm sure they're ready for Ted Cruz. Mark, do you think, uh, <laughs> who, should, who should the potential Democratic nominee be most concerned about right now? Oh, I'm not concerned about any of them, frankly. I think that uh, the Republicans are attacking each other right and left. They're destroying each other. One of the things I really like about oh, Bernie Sanders DMC. and Hillary They're Clinton is even though, they disagree, even though they disagree, they, they do so in an honorable <laughs> fashion. They don't insult each other. We're the party of dignity, the responsibility. They're the party yeah. of low-life insults and, and you know, sandbox dignity. cracks. Yes. Okay, Emily, I'm going we, we, I'm gonna, I'm to I'm give you the last word, and then we have to wrap it up. Thanks. Well, quickly, I think it's silly to say that the, the, the Democratic Party is the party of dignity when you have one candidate, Bernie Sanders, stealing the donors of another candidate. So I think right now they're in a mess. Um, so I, I'm feeling pretty good over here on the right. All right. Emily Jashinsky and Mark Levine, thank you guys for joining us. We very much appreciate it. I'm sure we'll talk to you before Iowa. Thanks so much. Thanks, Liz. Thanks. A quick programming note tomorrow on Fox News Sunday. Chris